I just want to tell you a quick story. This is in my book, Make Every Day a Wednesday. Hopefully you have a copy. If not, hey, go ahead and click the link, get a copy. It's available to you. But I want to tell you, so I was in Las Vegas, me and my family, my wife and I, we go pretty much every year, my in-laws, my cousin, and we go watch the Super Bowl every single year. So every year we go, my wife always states, oh, I'm going to get an extra tattoo. I'm going to add to what the one she already has. And so we go walk the strip and ends up she doesn't get a tattoo. Well, this last year we were in Vegas and she decides that she's going to go ahead and get this extra tattoo. So she got a tattoo, I see her at dinner, and I'm looking at it, and it's real nice, and I've been talking about doing something that will set me apart, or actually getting outside of my comfort zone. So I grew up church boy, loved God, still do, but I just always stayed in this box. As crazy as you see me, as bold as I am, there's still a comfort zone around certain things. Now, first off, I don't think anything's wrong with the tattoo. Second off, I never wanted one because I said I wasn't going to pay for pain. That's the real reason. Well, this year I decided I wanted to go get a tattoo. So I, I, I went after my wife did and I started off on the right side getting a tattoo, but it was temporary. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was, they drew on my skin and looked real. And I'm talking about, I thought like I was just killer toe, man. I had a tattoo on my arm and I really liked it. To the point my wife said, well, why not turn what's temporary into permanent? I said, oh yeah. So we went, we kept walking. I said, nah, I don't know yet. I don't know. So we were leaving, but before we left, I went to the place that she got her tattoo and I put it on this arm. Had temporary on the right, had permanent on the left. I turned it into permanent. See, I don't know who's listening and what you're getting from this, but here's the point. When you know that you know, see with strong clarity comes straight certainty. I could put assist you to win on my arm because I was clear that this is what I was going to be about for the rest of my life. Now I gotta tell you, part two to the story. I resigned from AutoNation in February. I got to a point that I was tired of sucking the pacifier. What do you mean? I was, I was, I was enjoying working there for a season, but I was now at a place that I was irritable about what I used to be thankful about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And I got to this point where I realized that my work ethic was decaying my life was being destroyed because I was in a place that was my place, but wasn't my place right now. Now, if you stay in a place too long, you could spoil what used to bless you. And I knew it was my time to leave. Now they were doing some stuff and it's not about them. So they were doing some stuff though that was really just bothering me. But I made the choice to drive there every day. I made the choice to accept the check. I made the choice to continue working there. So finally, I got the courage and I was ready to launch Assist You To Win probably two years ago. But I, I, I teetered, hey, I teetered. I wanted to do a little bit, but I didn't want to go all in. What if it didn't work? What if nobody bought in? What if nobody booked me? What if no one hired me as their coach? What was I gonna do then? So of course, just because you think thoughts of success doesn't mean you live thoughts of success. Well, here it is. I decided I'm resigning. So I resigned from AutoNation. You think I was ready to start Assist You to Win. What did I do next? I took another permanent position at another company. I'm, I took a position. Now, is that wrong? No, it's not wrong, but for my life, it wasn't right. So the first time I resigned, the second time I had a meeting with my employer and they kept telling me, Derek, this is not what you want to do. Why not go do what you're called to do? Well, I saw bills coming in the mail. I saw, I saw a kid that was off at college. I saw one that plays select baseball. My daughter over here is a cheerleader. I like to travel and I'm thinking, hold up, wait a minute. 
I don't have enough clientele yet for me to go all in. So I gave them that standard answer. Oh no boss, I'm good doing this. I had a lot more flexibility. But then 30 days later, they come back to me and this time they don't really uh, say, hey, what do you want to do? Y'all know what they did. They fired me. I got fired from my last position. So you say, why are you smiling? I'm smiling because three months later, I realized that I should have already done that back in February. Do you not understand that sometimes we need irritation, frustration, and some of us need a kick in the rear end called motivation, I needed it, to step out and do what you know you're called to do. So let me tell you the other side of the story. Right after getting fired, I've had more clients accept my offers, I've been speaking at more places, I've coached more individuals, and we haven't missed a beat. I want you to know today that what sometimes we fear we need to have faith for. So watch this. If you don't step out and step in, you may have something step behind you that's going to irritate you or remind you of what it is you're supposed to be doing. Don't get upset when you get a kick in the rear end that pushes you into purpose. Maybe that's what somebody needed. Now, I'm not out telling you to quit your job, but I am telling you to live your purpose. I am telling you to say yes to your dream. Some of you just saying yes is writing out your business plan. Some of you is going Facebook Live. Some of you, it's to go ahead and set up a meeting. Some of you, it's to hire a coach. Some of you, you just gotta do something. Maybe it's just to buy the book, make every day a Wednesday. But I had to tell you the story. I promised myself this. If I was gonna write a book, I was gonna write my real story. I was gonna write my real story, not a ghostwriter. I was gonna write my real story and I was gonna tell it exactly how it happened. The good, the bad, the indifferent, the ugly, the highs and the lows. So I had to tell you. Mom, dad, yes, it happened to me. My in-laws, yes, it happened to me. You, I haven't told pretty much any of them. So, hey, that's what happened. But the good news is this, Jim Carrey said it this way. His dad could have been a comedian, but he chose a safe route. Six years later, he got fired from a job that he didn't want to work. And he always lived a life of regret of something that he really wanted to do. So here's the point. If you're going to fail, make sure you fail forward and also make sure you choose what it is that you're failing. And matter of fact, you just may succeed. It'll put a smile on your face. That's what gave me the motivation to finish writing the book called what? Make Every Day a Wednesday. I want you to join me. Buy the book, come to the class, get in the course, do something. But take a step, have the courage to take temporary and make it permanent. I'll see you.